Meanwhile, the GOP is aiming at finally replacing the Affordable Care Act. A deal can be drawn at any moment. Moderate and conservative House Republicans are changing the wording of the bill. And the president hopes that the House will consider voting on the Obamacare repeal and replace sometime next week. Let's bring in Ethan Bierman. He's the host of the Ethan Bierman radio show. Also with us in studio is Peter Pitts, the co-founder of the Center for Medicine and the Public Interest. Peter, I want to start with you. Um, the Republicans haven't even done a formal whip count on this new piece of legislation that is supposedly coming on health care. Is it really wise for them to be building up expectations that the Republicans are gonna have a health care vote as early as next week? Well, I'm not a big believer in artificial deadlines, but from what I'm hearing, one of the major differences is the administration and Congress is finally realizing that states are the laboratories of innovation. They're gonna allow states to have waivers to move forward as they see fit. And one of the areas is to make sure the people that have serious conditions can, can get insurance through health uh, state risk pools. And the best one of those was designed by Seema Verma, who's now the CMS director. Unless the state opts out though, and that's one of the things that's in this legislation is to enable states to have a waiver to opt out of covering people who are high risks in order to keep their costs down. Well, I think that the philosophy here is that states really need to do what their people want them to do. And the politicians will either succeed or fail. And that thing, I think is what the Republicans want. Certainly I think the Freedom Caucus is looking for greater authority closer to the voter. Uh, Ethan, let's uh, give you a chance to respond. What do you make of uh, this new attempt that we are still waiting the full details on? But do you think that'd be better luck in getting this passed? Well, I think that now that they have a couple of House Freedom Caucus members on board, that there's a better chance of getting it passed. But I think what Peter is missing when he talks about states being the, the laboratories, they're supposed to be laboratories of democracy, not laboratories of how to make our uh, citizenry less healthy, less well taken care of, and to be pushed aside by certain states that don't want to spend the money on health care. Furthermore, none of this actually addresses the root cause issues. Why is health care so expensive in the United States? Why are people so unhealthy? This is what we need to be focusing on, plus the fact that Big Pharma, which Peter knows so much about, continues to make all of their profits on the backs of Americans. We aren't talking about the cost side. Well, uh, Peter, to Ethan's point, uh, many uh, Republican moderates are saying that the tax benefits are still not enough to help people uh, afford this. What do you say to that? Well, it really depends on you know, where they live and what the legislation actually says. We haven't actually seen legislation. I think it's important to recognize, though, that something we're not talking about that is crucial here that Ethan and I have talked about in the past is that people have to take personal responsibility for health care. Nowhere in this legislation is anybody talking about the value of diet and exercise and personal responsibility as far as that goes. We're talking about people getting sick and then treating them. We have to move from a system mm. that treats acute care to one that gets people well so they don't get sick in the first place. What about Ethan's point about pharmaceuticals? Don't they bear some responsibility in rising costs? It's an ecosystem. Pharmaceuticals represent 11 cents on the healthcare dollars. So I think it, you have to take it in perspective. But it's also right that you know the rest of the world is really doing a fair bit of free riding on research and development that the US taxpayer is paying for. Ethan, what about the argument that you've lost perspective? The lost perspective? I, no, I don't. I don't think so at all. <laughs> I didn't say that. I did. <laughs> but no, I mean pharmaceuticals are a big part of this, and, and part of the reason I say that, even if it's eleven cents on the dollar, when we're talking about almost twenty percent of our GDP, you're talking about a lot of dollars that you can save eleven cents on here. Because what has happened in the United States is there is a death grip by the part of both the physicians and big pharma trying to control how we access health in the United States. Other countries are moving past that, moving in ways that are much more progressive to actually help people. We are stuck in a system that is now 100 years old and we are allowing those people to continue to make the money on the back of unhealthy Americans. That's what we're talking about here. Well, Ethan, what about uh, Peter's point that it's because of the drug prices in the US that the rest of the world is able to have them so cheaply because in the US you're forced to pay so much for them and that's keeping these companies in business and innovating. Yeah, I, I actually don't buy that argument, not fully at least, only partially, because all I have to do is point out Mylan EpiPen. Do I need to talk about Pharma Bro and what he did? That has nothing to do with research and development. Should I also talk about insulin now, which is 90 years old, and in other parts of the world, we still have animal-based insulin. Here in the, in the United States, we created recombinant DNA insulin, and that, by the way, that's a free patent, $1. And why does that cost continue to go up exorbitantly year after year? It's because we 
refuse to rein in the abuse of big pharma on the American citizen. You don't have to weigh in there. You know, Ethan brought up a couple of outlier profiteers mm-hmm. who really uh, should be called out and they should be put in prison, in my opinion, for a lot of things that they've done. The majority of the big companies that really pour the billions of dollars into research and development are doing the right thing. So to compare outlier profiteers with what's really going on in the mainstream is is misleading and and takes their eye off the prize. Ethan, regarding the politics, is it very smart for Democrats to continue to sit on the sidelines or should they get a little bit more involved and offer some plans of their own to fix Obamacare on the chance that maybe Republicans need their help to get this passed? I would actually like to see some Democrats start to get involved in the process. We see that the Republicans are not able to fully come together. I actually don't believe that this will pass next week. And if that's the case, this is the opportunity for Democrats to step up and say, look, we like the Affordable Care Act. We like what it did. It always needed changes these last few years. Let's offer some suggestions on changes that would actually improve the Affordable Care Act instead of just sitting back and letting it actually get hurt so badly because President Trump has talked about stopping the insurance subsidies. This will be exceptionally damaging to the American people. It's actually time for the Democrats to step up now. Amen. I think that if people stay, uh, if, if the hard left and the hard right keep saying no, they're going to find themselves in the political wilderness and will not find a happy ending come election season. Well, uh, Peter, one of the issues has uh, been a cuts to Medicaid. And some of the moderates are saying that this new bill does not address that, this new act. What can be done then? Well, I think specifically with with Medicaid, you, it, that's a hard stop. You know, when it comes to healthcare reform, it doesn't mean spending a lot less. It means spending what we're spending now more appropriately. And I think if people get caught on having this cost less, uh, they're going to be very disappointed. Healthcare is not inexpensive; it's what it's what people need. Ultimately, it lowers national costs when people are healthy. But if you're looking to spend less to provide more, that's just a fantasy. Ethan, we'll give you the last word. Yeah, actually, what's so funny is Peter and I completely agree on that point. You're not going to be able to get away with spending much less, again, until we address the underlying issues. So I like the fact that we're able to find common ground, and I wish only that our politicians in D.C. would do the same thing. Ethan Bierman and Peter Pitts, you've done what they cannot do. Agree on two things today, (laughs) even as I'm putting words in your mouth, Peter, and Michelle's giving Ethan a hard time. Anytime. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Straight ahead, there's a bigger emphasis.